Hello, hat face. Letters to a future nurse. It's been a long time between rodeos. We've just won a Indie Reader Book Award for our co-authored co book, internationally co-authored book, for the stories that our media and our news won't share. And the best way that we can get them out to you is by doing these readings and they go onto my YouTube. And I've read this story a couple of times and each time I get to be a hot mess. And you'll see why, and you'll see why it's so important that these stories are shared, why our amazing frontliners go into those roles of, of being a carer and how important it is that we care for them. So this one that I'm reading today is by Leah Parker, who created Letters to a Future Nurse, create, brought us all together and co-created this beautiful book of stories of hope. So I'm going to read the story and if you know my story, you'll see um, the correlation. But this this is a beautiful, beautiful woman and I wanted to read it again so that I could put it onto my YouTube channel and it could be there for, um, for, for more people to see. So, Letters to a Future Nurse, Chapter 1. The Small Jester of a Student Nurse by Leah Parker. It was not a warm and fuzzy story or moment that made me choose the career of nursing. Instead, it was the very opposite. It was the lack of compassion, the way I felt invisible to a system that did not seem to see me as worthy. It was on my 18th birthday during a special sonogram appointment that my boyfriend and I heard the devastating words, non-compatible for life. I was pregnant with our first child and the paediatric cardiologist explained that our daughter had a condition called hyperplastic left heart syndrome. Without, medical or med med without major medical intervention, she would not survive. That moment changed the course of my life. It also forced me headfirst into a medical system I was completely unfamiliar with, not to mention I was still in my senior year of high school and on Medicaid, the state's medical insurance for the poor. The paediatric cardiologist reviewed our options at that appointment and told us we could have a medical abortion, carry her to term and let her pass peacefully after birth or consider a risky heart transplant. We chose what would be considered today as perinatal hospice. I decided to carry the pregnancy to term with the intention of letting her pass peacefully after birth. The decision meant me getting transferred to a high-risk pregnancy centre. This was where my experience with feeling less than really began. I will never forget walking into my first appointment and sitting in a waiting room with fellow pregnant mums. Most of them were like there because they had diabetes or high blood pressure that day, not like me, not because their baby was not going to make it. The usual waiting room chit chat would not be happening for me. The nurse brought me into the room where my appointment was going to be and jotted down my information and then proceeded to ask me several questions. But I will never forget one particular question. After looking over my chart, she looked up at me and said, you do know that your baby is not going to make it, right? If that question was not harsh and awkward enough, the next thing she said was, why are you choosing to keep her if she is just going to die? I do not remember my response to her, but I remember feeling my body shaking with both sadness and anger that she would ask me such a question without compassion. The way we speak to patients matters. The tone and inflection of her voice matter. To this day, almost 25 years later, I remember this nurse not for her kindness, but for how she made me feel that one day. Months later, the sun was beaming on my face as I walked into the hospital to deliver our daughter. She came into the world as a strong little one, weighing seven pounds and two ounces. She looked perfectly healthy on the outside with a head full of thick curly hair. Not long after her birth, a new, new paediatric cardiologist was on call that weekend and gave us a different option for her condition. There was a relatively new pr procedure and a paediatric surgeon who had just recently moved to town could perform it. We chose that new procedure call, called the Norwood procedure, which gave us a little more time with our daughter. Over the course of those eight weeks with our daughter, she faced several medical emergencies due to the fragility of her heart. She encountered several different nurses during that time. Even though I was young, I was not naive to the, gra to the gravity of the situation. Up until the birth of our daughter, we were planning for her funeral. We spent the last months of her pregnancy both with joy and also grieving as we knew our time with her was growing shorter. 
I say that because one of the most frustrating moments of our time interacting with nurses was feeling like we were invisible. I am unsure if it was because we were young that they felt like they could not speak with us as they did with other families. Whenever there was an urgent situation, it seemed like they would not tell us exactly what, what happened until hours or days later. When I would ask a nurse to check on her because I felt something was wrong, they would not come straight away. When they finally did, it would be an outright emergency. There were several situations where we would find out just how bad the situation was after the fact. A nurse or physician would tell us in passing something to the effect of, wow, we almost lost her that time, or that sure was a close call. They never went into any more detail though. They never shared what to look for to prevent an emergency from happening in the hospital. Instead, we depended on the bells and whistles from the machines to alert us that something was array. Not every patient would want in-depth details. I tend to have a type A personality and knowing the facts helps me process and prepare my mind. It's essential to ask your patient how they best want to receive information. Please do not assume. We had spent months preparing for the worst case scenario and felt like we had no say in, the, in her care at the hospital. It was such a helpless feeling. Our daughter unexpectedly passed away when she was eight weeks old due to a complication with her heart. In the aftermath of her death, when the flurry of feelings hit me, I was angry about her care, our treatment, how we felt left out when it came to important decisions, how we were made to feel less than. Several days after her death, I was finally feeling like myself again. I remember going through cards people had sent to us. There was one card with a name I didn't recognise. As I sat to open it, tears immediately started trickling down my face as I read the sweet words. The card was from a student nurse who cared for our daughter during a time I was not able to be there. She stated how she enjoyed caring for her and described sweet things she remembered about her. She also expressed how sad she was about it about her loss. Receiving that one card from that student nurse was so special to me at that time. It made me feel seen. It made me feel like my daughter was seen and cared for. The fact that she took the time to write a card to us, people she had not met, just felt so sweet. The small gesture of that student nurse had lasting effects. I still have that card tucked away today. After the dust settled, I decided to go to nursing school. I learned all the basics, how to take blood pressure, how to speak with the new medical terminology, all the different classes of medications, but it was that student nurse who taught me my best lesson, how a small gesture can, make, can matter so much. Whenever you decide to work in healthcare, the days and nights can move fast. Charting and the shift tasks may be daunting. Many units may be understaffed. You may feel rushed until you feel comfortable with what you are doing. Do not underestimate the tiny gestures you can offer your patients. A warm blanket during the night to, to a family sitting with their loved one who is on hospice care. Keeping a family and patient updated on what is going on in their care, especially if it is an urgent situation. Keep, it, keep in mind the tone of your voice. A soft voice can calm many intense situations. Check in to see if they need the hospital social nurse to pay for hospital parking. This was one thing I wish someone did for us. We didn't have much money at the time. We spent what we could on hospital parking, but missed some days with our daughters when we couldn't afford it. If a situation is sad or intense like my own, do not assume that if a patient is younger, they cannot handle the truth of the situation. Assess your patient and their family to see how best to deliver information. Ask them what they know about the condition or situation. Working in nursing myself over the last two decades has allowed me the opportunity to provide many small gestures to several families. I've sent quite a few cards over the years, held the hands of many grieving families, families and been a listening ear during a time when they felt vulnerable. But most importantly, I hope I've made my patients feel seen, heard and loved. I hope you as a future nurse get the wonderful opportunity to provide many small gestures to your patients. And Leah's practical tip is keep a nursing journal, journal where you can record your memorial moments in your career. Nursing is such a unique profession in that you live life and share sacred moments alongside the people you care for. You will have special memories as a result. Record them so you do not forget. And beautiful Leah is a true example of how God's grace can help 
one overcome mm. even the most difficult situations. She mm. is married to her middle school, middle school sweetheart, Tyrone, and is a mother to three living children and one angel in heaven. Mm. The, dog, the family dog, Luna, is also a valued member of the Parker family. For many years, mm. Leah worked as a registered nurse and an advocate for families expecting different types of perinatal loss. She is especially proud of a program she started at a hospital for families choosing to continue their pregnancy despite a diagnosis that was deemed incompatible with life. In this role, she was able to provide the support to them that she herself never received. She has spoken at nursing conferences of the topic of loss, educated many nurses. She served in that area for many years. She currently works as a family nurse practitioner and travels throughout rural America providing care for undeserved patients. She prides herself in providing a voice for the voiceless, encouraging and empowering patients to advocate for themselves. She is an autoimmune warrior and understands how frustrating the medical world can be. In addition, she gets great joy from helping other patients who are dealing with chronic illness navigate the world of medicine through advocacy and a functional medicine approach. You, you can contact Leah through www dot with leahparker.com thank you so much leah you're a gift